we all need freedom. And, and there's some things in life that happen instantly. You know, we get saved. Salvation happens in an instant, right? We're immediately brought into the family of God, and those things happen instantly. But other things take time, and that's why the Bible calls it discipleship. We make disciples. We have to learn how to follow Christ. And there's things in our lives that we need freedom from. And Jesus promised that he would bring freedom, but the way he brings freedom many times is it involves other people, it involves things. And so um, God has put it on the heart of several people in our church that the time is right uh, to start a ministry uh, to those who, who need freedom. Um, from, from It can be a hurt, it can be a habit or an addiction, or it can be a hang up, it can be uh, just, you use some better terms that she's going to get to here in a minute, but uh, it's for everyone. It's not just for those people. It's for everyone, and uh, it's created for you. It'll happen every Thursday night at 6 o'clock from 6 to 8. We've got this amazing team on the front row who's been working hard, and uh, so let's give them. They've sacrificed their time, and they have a burden uh, for this ministry, and while, while we were planning uh, this, this ministry and felt like God was leading us to do this because we've always had a heart for it and there's been ministries in the past um, that, that we have done and, um, and felt like it was time that it was God's season to do it again to, to bring this ministry back to Princeton and, um, or a ministry like this and so we began looking at models of who are some good ministries, who's doing it well, this type of ministry and we found a ministry in Hopkinsville, some friends of ours <laughs> Um, called The Road, and uh, The Road to Recovery, but they just call it The Road. They're at Calvary Baptist. It happens on Thursday nights, every Thursday night, and, and we went and visited this ministry, and we're like, wow, God is working here. God is doing some amazing things. Tuesday nights, yeah, of course. That's what I said, right? <laughs> Ours is Thursday night. Um, Tuesday nights, sorry. Theirs is on Tuesday nights. Ours is going to be on Thursday nights, but... Um, just amazing work. And Chuck and Sabrina Allen have been so kind. They've, they've helped train our, our leaders, but um, they are doing just an amazing job. God is working with them in Hopkinsville. So we invited them to come today and to share what God is doing there to give you, kind of help share the vision of what God, we believe God wants to do here as well. And so Chuck and Sabrina, would you all come on? Let's stand to your feet. Give a big Christ Tabernacle welcome. Chuck and Sabrina Allen. Um, so again, we've never done a service. I can't say that anymore. We just did it at nine o'clock. But uh, today is the first day we've ever had any kind of uh, situation like this, and and so I, I think you guys are really going to be blessed. But why don't you all just Chuck and Sabrina just take a moment to introduce yourselves and the the ministry that you lead there in Hopkinsville. Um, I just want to give props to your pastor, and there's several churches who probably do um, two services, but this is really weird. <laughs> to do the same thing again that we just, yeah, it's like, oh, wow, okay, all right, so we're going to try, and I'm like, You just like, have to remember, they haven't friend, heard this they before. They haven't heard this, yeah, most yeah. of you, so, um, and you get a I'm second I'm always try. saying, like, have I already said that? Yeah, yeah if I you did. forget something, but, you're like, ooh, we'll do it on the second time, so it's kind of nice, but we are at the same time. Um, my name is Sabrina Allen, and um, I'm very grateful to be here today. I am married to Chuck. We've been married for two and a half years, I think, um, and... A little bit of my story will come a little bit later. This is my second marriage, and I have four kids that I brought to this marriage, and he has one, so we have five together. We have our first grandbaby this year, so that's been pretty cool, um, and I get to lead this ministry with him, um, which is awesome that God's made a way for that, that our passion falls in line, and it's together, and so doing this this morning together was just a blessing for me, um, and I would want to encourage you that a lot of times, I think sitting where you're sitting, that you may see us up here and think, oh, well, that's really cool. I wish the Lord would would give me the ability or let me do things like that. Like, we're not, we weren't just equipped or qualified for, for this today. This is new for us. Um, training your team is new for us. We had never done that before. That was the first time. Um, we came very nervous with a group from our ministry that was very nervous. And we just showed up and did it. And it went really well. And it was a blessing, I think, for the team here, and they've shared that with us, and it was a blessing for us and for our team. So just being willing to serve the Lord and just show up and be where you think that he's called you to be, 
whether you're equipped for it, whether you're qualified for it, just being willing to be there, he will blow your socks off. I mean, that's just really awesome. Amen. Amen. So. That's good. And I'll let Chuck share um, about him and just a little bit more about our ministry. Um, yeah, this is weird doing this twice. <laughs> boring to you. I'll make some new stuff up this time too. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, I may tell somebody else's story. Um, yeah, my name is Chuck Allen. Um, I get to be uh, Sabrina's husband. And uh, and I was thinking about this. It's weird. I was thinking about the same thing, how um, how blessed we are to get to do this. Uh, but let me, let me say this. Um, it doesn't always feel like a blessing of what qualified me to be part of a recovery ministry. Um, it doesn't always, uh, it, looking back at what pushed me into that, the nightmare of a life that I had to live to get to that point, uh, it wasn't great. Um, yes, in the Word, and as Rhea says this a lot, the Word does say you're going to have suffering, uh, but I didn't have to hurt as many people along the way, and that's what, looking back, um, um, it is a blessing to be part of this in our, in our testimony, in our story. Everybody has one. Whether you think that just because I didn't go to jail or this, everybody has a testimony, and not everybody's going to relate to a guy that was in and out of jail and drank himself almost drank himself to death. Not everybody's going to relate to that. Some people are going to relate to something else, but my story just happens to be one of alcoholism uh, that ended, and that nightmare ended about 20 years ago, um, and, and that's just that's just my story. Uh, and everybody has one. Like I said, you know, uh, you have a testimony regardless of whatever. And and in, in Matthew 28, he wasn't just speaking to the broken to go help the broken. He speaks to everybody here. He says, all of you uh, go forth and make disciples. Mm. Everybody in here That's is good. called uh, to, to reach out to another person. Um, and I'm not saying that if you don't, he'll take it away, because I don't believe that for one second. But every single person in here is called. Uh, I happen to be called to... Uh, just to share the gospel with with men and, and ladies that are, are struggling uh, with with things that, that I've struggled with honestly I've struggled with everything there's a struggle with right you know alcoholism and, and, and drugs and, and uh, pornography I mean can we be real you know what I'm saying can we be real here and say that real people yeah. have real problems yeah and we live in an extremely nasty world that's full of things that take us down and absolutely and I've been a part of all of them abortions and all these things that, again I'm not proud of that at all but it's the reality of the world that we live in but on the flip side of that we get to sit here being as free me personally and my wife can speak for herself as free from any of that stuff as I've ever been in my entire life uh, Amen. And, and, and I thank God for, for that so our ministry is just a reflection of, of our lives honestly um, it is it's going to look very similar to what you guys do uh, we meet for a couple hours we have teaching we have worship and uh, again praise team awesome <laughs> it's fantastic I just um, and, you know there, there's one thing to be able to sing but there's another thing to have the anointing of God to uh, share in the Amen. spirit which is fantastic yeah, that's um, so um, so we do that we, we, we kick off with worship with worship and um, and then we go into a teaching of whatever that looks like uh, testimony, teaching, some whatever it is that God's put on our heart, and it's amazing is that, you know, uh, as a pastor, you know, I'm thinking, I remember when we first got started with this thing, you know, there's a fear that comes about you, what are we going to talk about every Tuesday? I would hate to think I had to preach every single, but that's kind of where it's at, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and and here's the thing, is that when God has called you, he will give you all the words, he yeah. will give you all the so scriptures, true. he that's will good. give you all the people in front of you to do whatever, you know, He's. Not, it's not going to be hard, it is sometimes difficult, but it is not going to be hard, and he will, and that's what he's done here with you guys is that there is a passion here and there has to be a heart for what we're doing here and it's a shame that it's not the heart of every single congregation but the but but the reality is it's 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 not right it's not always right. so um, it's good it's completely different you know um ministry start at you know i think you know you, you said not every congregation does that i, I think that um there's a lot of things like our, the, when we started our feeding ministry, it, we knew it was a good thing, but a lot of times it's trying to figure out, is it God's timing for this? Because it requires, as you all know, it requires so much. And so um, I know for us, you know, there's, there's supposed to be four chairs up here today. It just, just hit me that it hit me real strong first service. But uh, Steve Bourne's supposed to be up here, and he's sick with the flu right now. So the enemy has constantly attacked. Um, and so he's... But really, there were so many people in the church that just kept coming. And all I did was have to bring up, I think we need to pray about this. And, and just people began to come out of the woodwork saying, yes, we need to do this. And what I found is that many people had a burden. 
And a lot of times, you know, I know that happened with Steve. And, you know, Steve wasn't one, didn't have an addiction per se, but he had a burden. Um, and he, he had a burden. He saw the brokenness. And, and, you know, I don't think that a doctor has to be a cancer survivor to help someone with cancer. If they have the solution, then they can be, hey, you know, I don't have to, I may not be able to feel it, but I know what the answer is. And so, you know, that was Steve. He had this burden, and then all these other people had this burden. And so a lot of times I think ministries are, you know, sometimes it started by, you know, like a testimony that you have and you want to see others have the same. And then other times it's just a burden. And so share about how, you know, was that the case with you all? Um, I think that was definitely the case with us. I'm going to share a scripture that um, Chuck actually got to share in the first service in Second Corinthians. Okay, it's 2 Corinthians 1, 4, and 5. 4, he comforts us in all of our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction through the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For as the sufferings of Christ overflow to us, so through Christ our comfort also overflows. Um, and Chuck mentioned I speak a lot to suffering, and as it says in there in verse 5, for as the sufferings of Christ overflow to us, sometimes we want to jump to that comfort part too quickly. Um, and when we can comfort others, it just shows that as the suffering that Christ dealt with and overflowed to us, yeah. then the comfort will overflow to us as well. Um, for my own life, in about 2011, my first marriage, my husband struggled with alcoholism, um, substance abuse, and it was very functioning, so it wasn't your normal, and there was no jail time, there was no loss of jobs, anything like that. We looked like a normal family in the church. Um, I got saved in 2003, all of our families in church. At that time, we were teaching 11th grade Sunday school. I mean, we were walking it and doing it and living it, and, and most people on the outside didn't know about our situation. Now, we had a lot who did, and we did talk about it, um, but when he chose to leave one weekend and I came home and he was gone, that was just kind of a, a shaking of my world. And even before that, the Lord had begun to show me as I was going to recovery meetings and um, agape group meetings which was for family members of, of substance abuse users that there was just this neat little group of about eight people that met in my church and there was about a 1500 membership at that time that would gather and would really talk about life like hard things how was your week I'd be able to openly share my kids are a mess my husband come home drunk my kids are seeing us fight like I don't know what to do with this and we would get to talk about these things and there would be such freedom in that for me because I could be honest and I would hear other people share and I'd realize I wasn't the only one. Um, but at the same time, I felt like there was a body of the church that were scared of us, um, that felt like here we were with all the problems, all eight of us, and then there was a whole congregation that was like, we don't have any issues. You know, yes. we're not going to come to that. It was so secretive, and what I learned in the rooms of that recovery group and others was that there's this raw vulnerability, um, and I use that word a lot, and Chuck's like, I don't know that people know what that means. Um, so it's just the ability to be transparent and show up. Um, and when we say vulnerability, it doesn't mean that you can just vomit all the things that's gone on in your life, but vulnerability is measured by the amount of courage or the amount of risk involved to be courageous. So what are, what's at risk? Like maybe people aren't going to talk to me anymore if they know what's going on at home. And the, the fact that you're scared to death to tell somebody something and you do, that's vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I saw in those rooms. Like people got healing by sitting around and knowing that others dealt with it too and coming together and praying over raw, hard things. And so I had a desire then. I didn't know that it would lead to this, but... I had a desire to begin some type of ministry in that sense, to bring the 12 steps to the church was really what I said out of my mouth. And so the fact that we got to come here a couple of weeks ago and train your team to actually do some of this work that we're already doing, I just sat in awe at how God just ordains our life when we're willing to be transparent, when we're willing to sacrifice our life and lay ourselves down for what he has for us. So that's kind of my part in this ministry. But it, like he said, it didn't just start from, oh, let's just start a ministry. Let's just jump in full swing ahead, full speed ahead and throw our life to this. It was years of building up and trying to follow what God was laying out because I couldn't see it all. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, yeah and, and, and real quick, the other thing I want to that I want to say about this is that there, you're looking at years of 
of, of this, though. You know what I mean? Is that uh, and the one thing that we encouraged uh, your, your pastor and, 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 and Steve is that your leadership team is to go through steps yourself, right? And, and, and learn some things about yourself because it is hard to help another person when you are dying on the inside. Yeah, they'll pick up on it in a second. Hurting people in a, in a second will pick up on if you've got stuff going on, it's just hard. There's a, there's a connection there. There's a wall up. So you guys have done the hard work for that, and that that's amazing. Um, and and our, our ministry is just it's a, it's it's honestly a, re- a reflection of our of our own lives, um, and for for, for us. Um, the other thing I was I was thinking here uh, real quick is that um, this applies to everyone that's in here. You know, you are either you have you're 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 just all, everybody in here is going to fall in one or two categories right you have the, you have either overcome something or you haven't overcome it yet something mm-hmm. I don't care who you are yeah you know what I'm saying All right. this this dude me her I called your pastor a dude that's okay yeah. <laughs> I'm used to that you know he has overcome something and there's some things he hasn't overcome yet and right. it, that applies to everybody so yeah. the thing is to say that uh, that this ministry will or won't apply we just happen to go to a church full of some really um, amazing but broken and messy people um, yeah. starting from the pastor on down a life yeah. that is just testimony after testimony of brokenness and God's sovereignty and brokenness and God's sovereignty and that applies to everybody in here so if you haven't went through it yet you're going to yeah. you know if you haven't yeah. went through it you're, you're going to if you haven't overcome it yet you know, pray for the Holy Spirit, and, and it absolutely will happen. So, right. And that's the thing with, with what's going on here. And that'll be one of his questions uh, coming up. Yeah. No, that's so good. And I, I think, you know, it's so important. A lot of times, I think in the past, people felt like they had to put on a front when they went to church. You know, you're fighting all the way to church, and you pull in the parking lot. You know, you're slapping the kids. And then everybody get out. All right, guys, straighten up. And, you know, we're, we're at church. And, and we have to act like everything is perfect. Perfect, but what you're saying is that you know we have to normalize that we all go through stuff, and we all and there's no perfect families, and you know especially in a, the world of social media, uh, where everybody's posting their highlight reels, and you look at their pictures, and you know and they're they're posting pictures from where you know they're they're in Hawaii, and and uh, and and you're in Fredonia, you know, and it's uh, <laughs> nothing against Fredonia, but you know you're eating at the Coon Dog Inn, and they're at the beach, and. And it's just like we see everybody else's highlight reels, and um, but we need to normalize that life is messy, as you said, from the from the from the top down. Our um, tagline behind our ministry is um, "It's okay not to be okay." Yeah, and we good. use that from the Village Church that we kind of mirrored ours off of, just because it's it's hard to do that sometimes. Right. Um, we know that Jesus came to give us life and salvation. And, um, but when it comes to freedom, sometimes that takes time. And if you could, in fact, we got Freedom 418. The 418 comes from Luke 418, and it's where Jesus introduces his ministry. And it's the very first thing that he said when he walked into the temple. He's 30 years old. He's introducing his ministry, and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom uh, for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. You know, it's, he was, wanted to see people who were in bondage. His heart was to see people in freedom. In freedom. And so we, we feel like that if that's Jesus' mission for the church, if his vision for the church is that, then he's given us the same Holy Spirit. That should be our mission. It's not about, well, what's your vision for the church? It doesn't. It's not my church. It's his church. And it's his vision to see people saved, healed, set free, delivered. And, um, and you know, some things, again, happen at an instant, but other things, it takes time, doesn't it? And, um, you know, Jesus can certainly do it. I was thinking, I mentioned this first service, about Lazarus. Uh, Lazarus was dead, uh, had been in the tomb for three days when Jesus shows up, and he comes to this very nasty stinky situation and Jesus just speaks the word he says Lazarus comes forth and and Lazarus comes out and he's alive I mean he goes from death to life which is a picture of what happens when we get saved we were dead in our trespasses and sins but now through Christ we've been made alive so he's breathing he has life but he's still all bound up in grave clothes and so Jesus looks at the people around him and he says you guys loose him and let him go 
I mean, Jesus could have spoke a word and the, the grave clothes would have had to fall off, but he allows us to be part of the process. And so I, I think, you know, some things happen instantly, and we love those stories of about instant. It sounds like yours, when it came to alcohol, was pretty instant. You did, it wasn't 12 steps. It was an instant thing. But other people, it doesn't happen that way. So is that in your experience? How, how does God use other people to bring healing to others? So um, Absolutely. We see that within the ministry. Um, there are those that come in that have a story similar to Chuck's, whether it was alcoholism, whether it was pornography, um, whether it was just a struggling marriage, whether it's two people dealing with it, um, grief. We, we deal with a lot of different things. But there's times, I would say more often than the immediate, that you see someone come in and out of the problem they're dealing with to where they'll try to try to get involved, they'll try to walk with Jesus for a bit, and then they'll just decide it's too difficult. And they'll throw their hands up and they'll go back out into to how they used to live, um, whether that is addiction. Ad we'll refer to addiction a lot because alcoholism is an easy picture to look at. If I say in and out of alcoholism, then we're talking going back to the bottle, back to in being in and out of the jail, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, so sometimes it takes two or three rounds of maybe a rehab for somebody or two or three rounds of going back to the way they used to live um, in the brokenness before they actually decide, I'm done. I'm ready to, to turn away from this life for good. I think in the midst of that, when you're having a ministry like this, the best thing that I could share with you is that I am not the Holy Spirit. So what that means is sometimes everything that I think I need to do or I think I need to chase somebody down and, and have them do this is, is me. The Holy Spirit is the one who draws. I'm just there to offer love and support to this individual and to speak truth into their lives as well. But I can't change them. Yeah. So if they choose to walk back out into the madness of their life, whatever that looks like, there's different levels of madness, then I have to let that happen. Like I, if, I, if I chase every individual, we run probably about 60 to 100 people um, on a Tuesday night. So if I'm constantly puppeting every one of those individuals um, when they get in and out of rehabs, because we do bring three different treatment, four different treatment centers in as well, and chasing all the individuals who aren't in treatment around, I'm going to be exhausted. Like yeah. that's not going to be in and of the spirit, and I'm going to hate ministry. So I have to remember that that's not what God has called me to do, and I just need to be patient and trust his work and his timing. Like, we yeah. just don't know what that looks like. It took me years to be who I am today, and so I have to be patient in that and trust his timing, not my own. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was really good. And I think that's one of the things that we fall into, especially if you've been a Christian for a while, is we forget where God brought us from. You know, we, we think about... Uh, and how long it took for us to get there. And we want it so bad. We've experienced freedom. And many times, I mean, for me, it's, it took decades to get over some things and past some things and to get victory. It took decades. But then now I want it for everybody else. And I want them to have it instantly, though it took me decades to get there. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? You know, don't you get it? Well, it took me 20 years to get it. You know, and so we have to show a lot of grace. And we're all different. And, um, and, I, and I know that... A lot of times when you think about Freedom 418, I'm sure there's people who are already like, I don't need that. They're thinking that I don't have addiction. I don't, I don't suffer with addiction. So, but it, I mean, I, I think if it's like your ministry in Hopkinsville, would you say that it's the road would be for everybody and not just for those battling with a certain addiction? Um, absolutely. I think my heart for sure is the church body, if I'm real honest. Um, 80% of the people who walk in the doors of a ministry like this are actually going to be unsaved individuals. Um, but if we think about all of Scripture and what it tells us about the church body, we know that 50%, I think for the most part, to what I read in Scripture is actually not saved, um, that there will be some that reach heaven and we're going to get, I never knew you or you mm -hmm. never knew me. So my response to that is I lived in a, a very religious spirit for years to where I just had this list of things that I knew I didn't cuss, I didn't watch R-rated movies, um, my clothes were very modest, like I had all these rules and guidelines around me that I didn't do, but it caused me to become very judgmental of others around me. Um, I would look at other people and think, well, they're acting like this, they cannot be a Christian, like they're not doing what I'm doing. And that created a very unloving environment that I would bring into other people um, a scripture that I like to go to often is Matthew 7. I'm going off memory here, so I hope this is right. Um, 
I'm used to that little wire on my face. It works a lot better when trying to turn this Bible. <laughs> okay. Um, Matthew 7, 1 says, Do not judge so that you won't be judged. For with the judgment you use, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I think too often what happens is at that time, I'm going to use me as an example, I didn't love myself. And the word tells us to love others as we love ourselves. And I didn't love who I was. I was constantly trying to reach this goal in Christianity that just didn't exist. I was constantly working on myself and couldn't see anything going on around me. So once I began to recognize that Christ is actually in me, like when I accepted him, his spirit lives in me. He's in me. He's walking everything out. And I don't have to, to fix anything. It's just going to naturally happen within his power um, because of my love for him. And he's going to constantly be sanctifying me and changing me. Then I began to chase him and stop judging other people. It didn't matter anymore. So I think when that happens... Um, then the church becomes this beautiful place where people can come in and they're welcomed and they're loved instead of thinking, I don't know how to deal with that sin. I don't know how to deal with that person. I don't do those things. Um, and for me, this ministry is just as much for you people mm -hmm. as it is for those people because honestly, I was the one who was broken and who didn't know how to love others because I was so self-righteous. Yeah. That's great. Real good. Um, one thing I was uh, I was thinking about here, uh, we, we launched in um, April of 2018, right? Yeah, so we're coming up on. And, and just, just let me share with you guys real quick here uh, some of the lessons that we've had in large group. Um, I taught a month. Our, our first series of lessons was on shame, right? It wasn't on alcoholism. It, as a matter of fact, we've yet to have a lesson on alcoholism or drug, or drug addiction or any of that. You know what I'm saying? We, we've yet to have, so when you think recovery, well, you know, it's about getting sober. It's about sobriety. And, it, and it's really not. It's really not. Um, so our first series of lessons by my wife was on shame and guilt, right? Real things that everybody, that it hits, you know, it hits everybody. And then, uh, uh, then I taught a series on pride and humility. I mean, who wants, who wants to get in on that, right? I mean, who has a little bit of pride, right? Mm -hmm. you know, everybody that doesn't raise their hand. Like, right. What keeps you from raising your hand? You know what I'm saying? So I did that that night, too, and it works. Yeah, what yeah. are we going to do with that? Nothing. So, um, you know, pride, you know, <laughs> humility. Uh, we taught a series on uh, maturity, right? And you think, what's that got to do with recovery? It's got everything to do with recovery. It's got to, that's everything that's keeping people from recovering, mm -hmm. Right. And those are just biblical things. I mean, the, the teaching the word over and over again about growing up, going from the milk to the solid food, you know, about pride and humility. I mean, he's again and again, he's talking about these things. And we, we've taught lessons on obedience, which is, again, a, a, a you know, part of this, this maturity. So when you, when you ask that question, what's, you know, we, we, now we did teach what for, we taught like two months in a row on, on sex. Um, but, but again, you know, you, you think, well, what's that got to do with recovery? I mean, is again, when we're talking about people that are struggling with all of these issues, it's, it's the fallback. Sex is the fallback and just being real. Uh, so we, we teach on these things. So what does that, so does that apply to anybody here? Issues with, with, with sex, issues with pride, issues with humility, issues with obedience, things like that. So those are the things that we're teaching here. And what we don't teach is, you know, we're not giving out tokens on how long it's been. We don't celebrate how long it's been since you've sinned. We don't celebrate it. We only celebrate Jesus. That's it. Mm. All that we do is point people to the... Now, did I grow up in, a, in an environment to where did I, you know, I got sober in a place to where getting the, the token was amazing and it was great? I did. I, I really did because it was, it was pretty cool. I ain't gonna lie. I, was, mm -hmm. I used to go get those. I, don't, I think I even got my 20 or whatever this year, but I really don't think about it much anymore. Rocky, we don't really talk about how long it's been since you've done whatever because what I want to know is how's Rocky today? Yeah. You know I'm saying? That's what we talk about. Right. Uh, so we don't really celebrate uh, you know, sobriety and, and abstinence. We don't talk about those things. Abstinence and sobriety will be a byproduct of holiness. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's Abstinence, good. sobriety, not doing the things is going to be a byproduct of holiness. So what we want to do is point people to the cross to yeah. find the Holy Spirit, uh, and that's where the holiness will come into your life. Wow, that's good. Let's give God praise for that. That's so good. Um, 
I remember, you know, thinking about how this is for everybody. One of the people that jumped in to help was uh, Brother Jay Shoecraft, and uh, and Jay was like, he, I just want to, you know, I just, I, I'm, I'm free. I want to help other people. And as he began to go through the process, because like you said, you guys make them go through steps themselves before they can help others. And he's like, well, pe- you know, everybody needs this. People need this. And each week it was like, and he's like. I need this, you know, I need this, and I think that's what you find is as you're ministering to others, you realize that this is something that, that all of us need. Um, you know, the, the scripture in Luke, um, where this freedom comes from, 418, where again, Jesus, when he quoted that, he was actually quoting from the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 61. And so he's quoting Isaiah 61, 1, where he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news but then he goes on and he begins to talk about this great transfer that God wants to do where he says that he will give them beauty let me let me read it here um, I know he's going to put it on the screen but I don't know where I'm going yet so but Isaiah 61 it says that um, verse 3 says to console those who mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes and I, I think about so many people that come into a ministry, they walk into a church, and their life is just like, you know, I know for me, when I, when I came back to the Lord, after, you know, I grew up in church, but then when I got, got away from God, when I came back, I felt like my life was ashes, like I have blown it, I've messed it up, and it was kind of like, God, if you can do anything with this, I don't know what you're going to do with ashes. If somebody comes up and gives you a box of ashes, there's not much you can do with that, but God says, oh no, I can use that, I can do something beautiful with that. And I love that. He says, I'll give you beauty for ashes. He says, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You know, we, we were de- had this despair. We had this heaviness. And yet that heaviness is turned into praise because people find hope. They find freedom. And I, and I, I, I see so many people in the front row. And I look over here this morning and these people worshiping. And I know where you've been. And I know, you know, Scott Pruitt, you got a testimony. And Lloyd and Levi, these guys and James, they've all got testimonies about what God has done. And they're the ones who are praising the most because God has given them a garment of praise and, and taken away their heaviness. And so the testimony of God's grace and um, awesome. And then he goes on and he says that they may be called trees of righteousness. And Chuck, when I look at you, I think, you know, at one time you were like a tumbleweed, like the old Western movies, just kind of just blowing, you know, just from one place to another, in and out of jail and and these different things, but God has made you a tree of righteousness, and he's planted you, and now others are bearing, are getting to rest under your shade, and, and enjoying the fruit of what God's doing in your life, and he's made you a, a tree, he's made you strong, and able to withstand the storm, and then it goes on, and it says, and they shall rebuild the old runs, and they shall raise up the formal desolations, and they shall repair the, the ruined cities, who's the they? It's the one that used to be ashes. It's the one that used to be in bondage. And he says, not only does God want to give you freedom, but he's going to use your lives to restore and to rebuild others. So um, I'm just so encouraged about what God's done in your life. You know, share some other testimonies about how God has not only brought people freedom, but now how God is using them to restore and bring hope to others. So, um, we Let me say this to you. Before I say go to that, uh, we in in steps, and I'm not sure if it was in the material that you guys used or, or where we actually heard it, but it teaches that the testimonies are the nutrients to the body. Mm. Um, and so, if you think about it, people are not if they're just staying as those ashes and in a box somewhere, and they're not using their testimony, they're not coming out and getting healing and using their testimony. Then the nutrients won't exist, um, and without nutrients, the body will die. And so I think that's just a beautiful example of the importance of our testimony and us sharing stories. Um, one in particular that comes to me is a young lady who was going to, who came, I think. We had four weeks of training before we ever kicked off the road. And she is one who has actually not gone through steps. And she came and wanted to be a part. And we didn't, we didn't know that because we had had several meetings before that, four weeks of training. And so she just started showing up. And she has absolutely been... Um, just instrumental to the women's side because she is able to love and just pour nourishment into other women that come in from sexual abuse and just different things from their life because her story is one of being molested as a young child and she will openly share that with others and so she is 
stepped into healing, not only for healing for herself by doing this, but also opening up the door for healing to so many other women who come and she gets to sit across from. And she will share often that she had no idea that this ministry was for her when we were talking about it for months, going to launch it. And then the Lord just told her to come one night, and she did, and still didn't really fully understand it. And now it is the most exciting thing that she looks forward to each and every week wow. because she didn't have a chemical addiction. And so she just couldn't understand why the Lord was going to use her. And so I've just seen her flourish in being able to sit across from women, and that's been really neat for the women's side. Yeah. Also, Rocky here, right? Rocky, uh, yeah. he's part of our church, but God, he's, he's one of those oaks, one of those trees of righteousness yeah. that God's raised up. Yeah, and, and Rocky has shared his story. I don't know if he's shared it here yet, and if he hasn't, he, he eventually will. Um, because and everybody's got one, uh, but his is one of just like mine. You know, uh, went through the, the the drugs and alcohol, and 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 and, and an awesome thing is I know that as God has matured him, there's nothing that I don't think he would come up here and say in front of you guys. And you can do that when you're free from it. When you're mm -hmm. no longer in bondage of something, uh, you will freely uh, um, uh, put that out there. Uh, but yeah, Rocky uh, started coming to the road uh, a little bit when he got out of treatment a year and a half or so ago. I don't know what the dates are, and I don't really keep up with them, but whatever, you know what I'm saying. Uh, it had been that long ago, uh, and he was coming. He was sitting on the front row with all the other group of, uh, of, of recovery guys. They all kind of say when we keep the ladies and the men separated, we just do. <laughs> That's what we do. But anyway, so all these guys are over here, and Rocky's on the front row, right? And, uh, and he kind of left, and he didn't. I don't think he got uh, uh, lost sobriety or whatnot, but he kind of uh, got away from that. Then he comes back, uh, with, and something had happened to Rocky, and I could tell. Accepted Christ on Friday night at Life Recovery in Hopkinsville, and something happened, and then he and then he was teachable, yeah. right? And I think that's really what we're looking for. Um, what what as a ministry, what we're what we're trying to do with with you guys and with everybody else that's here, we're preparing you to teach when the students show up, right? And and a student showed up, and he said, "Will you teach me?" Um, I'll get choked up just saying this, but but I did nothing, right? But opened the garage door once a week, and Rocky came in, and and uh, and, and, we, and we we prayed together, and Rocky was transparent with him. You know, and I'm saying only the Holy Spirit could allow another man. I'm almost I'm pretty much a stranger in his life at this point, okay, and for for him to come into my basement on a weekly basis with his book and his steps and his notebook, saying, "Bro, I can't believe I'm fixing to tell you this, but here it goes," you know. And both of them just sitting there crying. I mean, that is the magic of what, I'm not saying that it's, it, it's just, it's something, there's something special to that. And all the way through the word of God, that's what he's asking us to do. Mm -hmm. He's asking one another to share with one another, bearing one another's burdens, sharpening each other, iron sharpening iron. He's asking us to do that, right? And the yeah. Holy Spirit gets involved first, and he puts men together, and he puts women together. And that's what he did with us. And this dude comes through this thing, finishing all the steps, doing these things. And then what did he say? What's next, bro? Yeah. That's that's the deal, right? Wow. What's next? So good. Leading small groups and doing things and sharing his story. I don't know how many places he's guys asked him and he's sitting there, he's humble at it, but I mean it is humbling how many people have asked this guy to come and share a story of hope. Yeah. I mean what what better thing? And you gotta get to have him here every week, you know, yeah. and it's gonna be part of your small groups and things like that. It's just encouraging to be around him. Yeah. Right. Amazing. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, hadn't it been good? Y'all y'all get something from that tonight? Um, I tell you, Becky, if you'd come on back up, um, that, that for me, that flew by pretty fast. I don't know if it did for you guys, but um, we want to close this morning with prayer. And because I believe that in this room today, you, uh, in a group this size, someone has a loved one, either you yourself or, or struggling. You have a, a habit, a hang up, a hurt, you have something, or there's someone that's on your mind thinking, I, I want them to have what, what Chuck and Sabrina have. I want them to have what Rocky has. I want them to have what these others have. And, and you got a, just a glimmer of hope today that it can happen. And we want to pray that God will begin to work in their lives. I mean, you've done all you can do. Uh, if, I, if I know you love them, you know, we do all we can do. And as you said, you can't change anybody. We're not the Holy Spirit. But there is a Holy Spirit. And we can pray. And we can ask God to move and ask God to do some things. And God can, can still do the miraculous. He can still deliver. And so we want to pray for you today if you want prayer. We're going to start. I, I want um, the team 
uh, to stand on the front row and I want the whole church to just stretch out your hands and pray for them and Sabrina if you take the mic or either one you want to pray pray over the team and uh, again because uh, they've been under attack from the moment they said yes to do this ministry. So y'all, everybody stand to your feet and just stretch out your hand toward them. Let's pray over them because they're on the front lines of this ministry. Um, and you, you also be praying. Maybe God is calling you to help. And I encourage you just come, just check it out. If nothing else, just come Thursday night and just check it out. See what God is doing. And then just ask God. God, is there something you want me to do? Is there some way that you want me to serve? And so uh, let's just pray over these frontliners here, if you would, Sabrina. Father, I love you. I thank you. Um, I'm just humbled to be a part of, uh, of this group of people that you've put here. Um, Father, in the sound of my voice, all the people on the front row here, that you have called them. I pray that your spirit has spoken loudly to them, that they have heard the calling here, that this life that they've lived up to this point has just been a stepping stone for this next part of their journey. I pray courage over each and every one of them. Holy Spirit, fall on them. Empower them to do something they don't even know that they're ready to do yet. Lord God, there's a part of their story that's going to come out in front of another person and you're going to use it for your glory. And I pray that they would know. And when that time comes, uh, enemy, you have no power here. You have no ability to speak anything negative to them. That the, the boldness is going to come from the power of Christ inside of each and every one of these people just to stand boldly on the truths that you've given them. I pray, that, Lord, that your spirit would just stay alive inside of each and every one of them. I pray, Father, that your, your word would just become the truth that every single person here stands on. When they get challenged by the outside world as they come in here and bring in their worldly thoughts and ideas and just uh, ignorance of what the truth really is, that every single person standing in front of me, that you would just shower them. Uh, with your scripture and your word and that they would dig deep and that they would never let go of these truths. I pray that over the next uh, season of their life as they become a part of this ministry, uh, Father, that they themselves would just continue to pray for the revelation that you have uh, for them. And Lord, uh, right now, I pray for the people that aren't here yet. I pray for those people that are out there. As of right now, as I speak to someone destroying their life, and they're as lost as they've ever been. If there is some darkness. Yes, God. And they are in the darkness. As I speak right now, there's someone sitting either at their home or in the alley or in the ditch or under a bridge somewhere that they don't mm. even know that Freedom 418 is in their future. And yes. I pray for that person as they yes, sit right God. now. Just continue to speak to them. And Lord, right now I pray over this congregation as they would just, yes, with God. their outstretched hands right now, that they would just speak to you father yeah just just submitting all their prayers to you for strength and power um, of your holy spirit to this team in christ's name amen 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 listen as we sing this last song